Crimea became a meat grinder for Russians. Problem is critical. Ukraine has not attacked the Crimean bridge illegally built by Russians for a long time since there is no need for it now. It is more profitable to use the crossing as bait now, said Ukrainian veteran, former company commander of the Aida battalion Yevgeny Diki. We need them to cover it, and we need to hit these air defense systems. We are now using the Crimean bridge as bait. We know that as soon as we burn several of their air defense systems in Crimea, they are guaranteed to bring new ones there in two weeks. The S-300s are gone, the S-400s are coming, and even the S-500s. We are essentially using Crimea as a big meat grinder for their air defense, because the Crimean bridge is sacred, and everything else is 8,200 miles of emptiness. As their band Aquarium sings, sorry, there is nothing to cover it with. And that is why their defense plants and energy infrastructure are burning, and this will not be weakened, but only intensified. As it turned out, the sanctions from Maliuk Budinov are much more effective than the sanctions from Biden, he noted in an interview with Ukraine Forum. According to him, the only superpower of the Russian occupiers can now be considered to be cab and fab strikes. Ukraine does not yet have the means to counter this threat. They do not only terrorize frontline and border towns with these cabs and fabs, but also, first of all, strike at positions. And this is the weapon that can take out almost any of our fortifications. And unfortunately, they have a lot of these bombs, he added. However, as Dickey noted, this problem is critical until we receive F-16 fighters. As soon as at least the first squadron and especially two of F-16 aircraft appear, which come with 100km range air-to-air missiles, the problem of cabs and fabs will be solved, because their maximum launch distance is 70 kilometers. Of course, they understand perfectly well that their advantage in the air is only a month or two away, and they are trying to use this time to the maximum, the veteran explained. As for drones, there are only two questions now. Who has smarter engineers and who will put more pairs of hands on the conveyor? We are winning in the first and in the second. For now, they are. But I will emphasize once again that their advantage is only in the air component. In missiles, first of all, Dickey said. So, there are no changes in ballistic missiles. The Russians are producing exactly as many as before the invasion on February the 24th. However, the Russians were able to put cruise missiles on the conveyor belt. As for the cruise missiles, in particular the KH-101, unfortunately they still managed to put the Kashkas on the conveyor belt. If in many other, let's say, areas, Western sanctions became critical for them because it turned out, for example, that in the Russian tank industry for the last 20 years, all the bearings were German and all the sites were French and so on, then these sanctions did not hit the KH-101. The KH-101 model was 100% Soviet and they were able to completely restore it. This is our big problem now, the veteran continued. At the same time, he emphasized that this is more of a rear problem that does not affect the front. As Joe Biden announced his sudden decision to drop out of the 2024 presidential race on Sunday, speculations emerged in media about possible Democratic candidates who will replace Biden in the election. Vice President Kamal Harris whom Joe Biden formally endorsed in his letter published on X on Sunday, is the most likely Democratic nominee for president. Pennsylvania Governor Josh Shapiro is another likely Democratic candidate to run against former President Donald Trump. When first running for the governor's mansion in the Rust Belt state of Pennsylvania in 2022, Josh Shapiro received more than 3 million votes, setting a state record. Another likely candidate is Kentucky Governor Andy Bashir. The name of the 46-year-old two-term governor from Kentucky has long been floated as one of the several governors could become the next vice president. Former Kentucky U.S. Representative John Yarmuth said Thursday that Bashir was one of three, alongside North Carolina Governor Roy Cooper and Pennsylvania Governor Josh Shapiro, in consideration. Some pundits and media outlets have also predicted that U.S. Senator Mark Kelly might be the likely Democratic candidate to run in the elections. The senator from Arizona, husband to former U.S. Representative Gabriel Giffords, had supported the Biden-Harris ticket and not withdrawn his support from the president. Another Democratic VP contender is North Carolina Governor Roy Cooper. Cooper, 67, is finishing out his second term as governor. North Carolina law prevents governors from serving more than two consecutive terms.